Fresh from the showcase here at Swiss Watch Expo, today we are talking about world time watches. We've talked about before that the idea of showing more than one time zone on a watch at the same time was a novel concept because people didn't even have the ability to travel from one time zone to another in any kind of relevant time until really the railroad age. And that's when the time zones really were instituted by sort of a, a, a world federation where they got together and they set up the time zones around the world. There are 24 main time zones that split the world into uh, 24 one hour increments based on where the sun is at noon in that time zone. So they're not exact. Uh, there's a, a, a wide uh, expanse in some of those time zones. Some countries use uh, one time zone for the entire country like China, which uh, ought to span five different time zones, but they use one. India ought to be uh, several time zones, but they use one. So these watches won't tell you the time perfectly in every time zone, but it's pretty close. Uh, a famed Swiss watchmaker named Louis Cartier in 1931 figured out the idea of being able to show all 24 main time zones at the same time on a watch. This led to the development of the Patek Philippe World Time, and it's one of the watches that Patek is really known for. We've done a separate video just on this watch before, so you might look that up, but this is one of my favorite all-time watches. Um, it's the reference 5110P, this one's in platinum, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a 37 millimeter watch, really nice size for anyone to wear even day to day, but it's such a beautiful color with the blue guilloche inner ring and uh, the button here to change the time zones. So as you change time zones, uh, the GMT ring rotates with the uh, main cities in those time zones, and you can read the time zone in any uh, place around the world all at the same time where a regular GMT watch it only shows the time zone maybe in home time and one other time zone sometimes you can turn a bezel to temporarily show a third time zone but these show uh, 24 at the same time so 37 millimeter Patek Philippe platinum gorgeous exhibition case back so that you can see that movement with the 22 karat gold micro rotor the Cote de Genève decorations on the plates just absolutely stunning Definitely one of my favorite watches ever made. Moving a little bit uh, across in the size here, we have at 38 millimeter, the Breguet Marine Oramundi, which of course means world time. And this one's a little bit more sparse in the way it looks compared to some of the other world time watches we've got here. It has the tra traditional blued steel Breguet hands and this coin edge to the case, which is really beautiful, uh, a closed case back, but a little more subtle if you were gonna pick for a world time watch, still on that smallish 37, 38 millimeter classic gentleman size watch. Then we move into the bigger ones. Um, if you find yourself being more of a jumbo watch kind of guy, I mean, look at the size difference between the Breguet and this Breitling Transocean. Uh, it's, a, it's a almost shocking difference, but this one's 18 karat rose gold. It's really thick. This is a watch that you don't forget you have on for sure. But it's a beautiful design. It's got the world in the center, uh, mostly black dial, but some red spots here and there. The size on this one, I know you're dying to know, it's 46 millimeter. It's called the Unitime. And um, it's probably the most modern looking of all these watches that we have here this morning. Um, and you definitely will attract some attention with this one. Uh, more so than where the subtlety of the Breguet or the Paddock might be a little bit more under the radar. But it's just absolutely gorgeous. Love the combination of the colors they used on this one. The size, I mean, nothing to argue with. Um, and it could be a good choice, definitely, for a lot of people. Now this one, uh, this one is the Omega. And this is an Aquaterra World Timer. And this one's really the value proposition of the bunch. It's about half the price of any of the others that are here and a thoroughly modern look. It's an interesting, the, the center map of the world on this one is on a titanium plate that is then surrounded by a glass uh, GMT scale. And I love the blues in this. Um, it, I, kind of uh, the, the blue outer section is reminiscent of that teak look. You know, Omega on the Aquaterra, they said that the dials uh, they represent the teak decking on your yacht. So uh, definitely can see yourself as the yacht master, uh, the one who's in charge of the yacht, who is also a world timer, part of the jet set wearing your, your uh, Omega. Uh, this one has 
one of my favorite movements we've talked about before. This is the um, uh, 8938, they call it, on the world timer. But it's essentially the same movement as some of the other coaxial master chronometers. It has the double barrels. It has the Cut de Genève in arabesque. Just gorgeous on the movement exhibition case back, so you can appreciate all that. Um, if you check out this one on their website, you'll see what I'm talking about, about the pricing. Of course, this one is steel and the other ones are gold and platinum, so there's a big difference there. And Omega being a, a company that's really prides itself on being the value proposition compared to some of their competitors, you're going to see a lot more movement for the dollar uh, from Omega than you do from other companies. But if you want that exclusivity, there's nothing like the paddock. If you want the large size, nothing like this Breitling Transocean. And if you like your uh, watches a little more subtle, go with the Breguet. But uh, you can look up some of those other videos we've done on World Time Watches. Click the bell, like and subscribe, and give us a call at Swiss Watch Expo. See which ones of these we still have in stock. We can find the perfect one for you.